Okay, a second common dystocia that we are um, called to assist in for delivery is what we would call a limb back or retention of the leg. And in this case, we're going to describe the retention of a foreleg or a front leg. Um, on the initial examination, the veterinarian will approach the birth canal and do an exam to determine whether or not the calf is in its normal presi position, uh, presentation, and posture. What we find here is that there is one limb of the calf present in the birth canal, and then as we continue to investigate, we find there is the head of the calf that seems to be in its normal place. And then when we try to identify the second leg of this calf, there is not a second leg presented into the birth canal. So what we have identified here is a retention of the leg, and it's retained at the shoulder for this particular problem or dystocia. The leg can actually be retained at many different locations. Sometimes it can be retained at the corpus, so you only have the corpus or the blunt end of the corpus presented to the birth canal. And then sometimes it's retained at the fetlock, so we only have the fetlock presented at the birth canal. In this particular case, we're going to demonstrate a full retention of the leg at the shoulder for this particular calf. So in order to correct this, we must obviously bring this leg into its normal position. And we, we know from our large animal species that we cannot deliver a calf without having the calf in a normal position, which means both front legs in the birth canal with the head located between the two legs. So this cow would not be able to deliver this calf even if you thought it could slide right out of the birth canal with the leg right up against the calf's side. So we have to correct this calf's leg and bring it into the birth canal. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our assistant here slide his arm into the uterus of the cow and we're going to identify that this calf's right front leg is retained at the shoulder. If you have very long arms or if the calf is presented to you very closely to the birth canal, you may actually be able to continue down the leg until you get to the point that you need to get to to correct, to make the first position correction, which is what's happening now. So as we slide down the leg, we go beyond the elbow and we get to the foreleg of this calf right here above the corpus. And that's our first area that we're going to grasp a hold of too. So the way we do that is we take our hands and our four fingers go around the back of the bones and our palm of our hands flush up against the side of the calf's leg and that gives you a very good grip on this calf's leg and a very good chance to pull the calf's leg to you. So gently we're going to pull the calf's leg forward until we get it in that position and we're going to stop right there. That's as far as we generally need to go with our hand in that position. The next step is we need to find the metacarpal bone of this calf. And so the metacarpal bone now needs to be identified. We can either slide our hands down just like this over this bone, but we may have a difficult time actually correcting it with our hands on top. So what we will do is we'll back out of the cow, we'll rest for a bit, gather our strength, and then we'll proceed forward again to identifying the metacarpal bone. So we'll slide underneath the calf's leg and we'll keep our hands like this position and we'll slide our fingers over the side of the bone in this position here. So now we're at the metacarpal area and our fingers, all four of them, hopefully will get across the bone just like that. And our thumb on the other side, connecting, making a circle. We have a really good grip on the foreleg of this calf at the metacarpal area. And then we slide this up. Generally, we have to go up because we have to clear the pelvic inlet with our foot. And we bring that forward. And then we actually may stop right there and we may actually have retention of the calf's foot at the fetlock on the pelvic floor. So what we have to do in order to not damage the cow because this point here the length from the corpus to the point of the toe can actually be 
longer than the actual diameter of the, calf's, the cow's pelvic inlet. And if we continue to try to present this leg into the birth canal with the length of this being longer than the diameter, we may actually cause damage where we could actually put enough force on the uterus of the cow and drive the corpus through the uterus, creating a uterine tear. So we have to be careful not to do that. So in order to avoid that, we're going to actually need to take the other, our other hand and slide it underneath the arm that has a good grip on this leg. And we're going to slide, keep sliding our hand under until we guard the cow against the point of the feet, just like that. So you can see now that we have the feet and the point of the toes of the claw in our hand, we can then bring this calf's foot into the birth canal and correct this dystocia. The second most important thing that we have to do is we must push back with our corpus and sometimes sideways. And then once you do that, you clear space and room for the foot to pass through and enter into the birth canal. So we'll repel the calf's upper limb back into the cow's uterus. Then we'll take our fingers of our other hand and slide it, the calf's foot into the birth canal. Again, we're changing places the best we can. And once the calf's feet enter the birth canal, the rest is simple. The calf's leg will continue to follow as you slide out of the cow and correctly place the limb back into the normal position for it to be delivered 